Hi, so glad to have you with me this evening. We're gonna just share, I'm gonna share for a few minutes this tonight, some more on healing, and I've got my healing notebook of so many scriptures, and so I'm gonna, I'm enjoying going through these healing scriptures with you. I'm taking the word for myself, and uh, I uh, walk in divine health. God's healed me many times, but again, there's so many, I, I have been praying yesterday, I prayed with uh, quite a few people yesterday that needed healing and and um, you want to share your testimony with people. There, People are uh, need to hear about how Jesus has healed you and how you take the word for yourself. So um, I want, the Holy Spirit led me to talk tonight from the book of John and this is about one of the miracles and, um, Pat, and it was so interesting because the Lord wanted me to minister on this particular passage. And uh, Pastor Kevin was speaking on Sunday about, you know, that God doesn't, uh, Jesus never saw uh, them. We would call them miracles, but he was just doing the works of God. And that's where it comes from, this scripture here in, in John chapter 9. So let's let's go to the word and we're just going re to read this. And I, I titled this today, um, words of healing instructions for healing and um and so when we get um an instruction from the lord and and i think it's a really wonderful story here uh about this this and we're gonna we'll read the story here and then we'll we'll talk about it okay and it's um so we're gonna go to um uh, chapter of john verse nine and um thank you jesus and it's the story um Thank you, Jesus, uh, about uh, the blind man. And let's, we're going to read from chapter 1, uh, I'm sorry, uh, John chapter 9, starting with verse 1. I see you on there, Helen. God bless you, sister. I'm going to talk, talk to you later. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth, okay? And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, Master, who did sin? this man or his parents, that he was born blind. You know, so immediately they thought that it was a sin issue, that that is why they, that man was, was ill, okay? And Jesus answered, neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work, Jesus, these are all Jesus' words, I must work the works of, of him that sent me. While it is day, the night comes when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world to show us how to do things, to demonstrate the way to receive healing, the way to pray. He demonstrated, Jesus was a demonstration of, uh, he corrected us. He showed us things that needed to be changed and things that the Old Testament said, and then he would give light. He was the, he is the light. He still is the light, but he's in heaven now. Amen. And so when he had thus spoken, what he did is he spat, he spit on the ground and he made clay of spittle with the spittle and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And said unto him, Now go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed, and he came back seen. And the neighbors, therefore, and they which had before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? And some said, This is he. And others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, how were your eyes opened? And he answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and I washed and I received sight. Amen. And so in this story here, who, you know, you know, think about now you've got a problem with your eyes or you're blind and Jesus gets, goes to the ground and spits into this dirt 
and puts it and rubs it in and anoints a man that has an eye problem. He puts this ointment, this oint, this dirt and spit on his eyes. Amen. So, I mean, it's so, it seems so contrary. The point is to, to what you would do to heal your eyes. Um, but the Lord knew what he was doing. Amen. And, and I think sometimes we have to, sometimes the instructions of Jesus to, to us to do something for our healing, they seem contrary. They seem ludicrous. They seem, how could that be? Like I shared about on, on Monday, I, yesterday, I shared about how the Lord spoke to me about eat, not eating grapes from Chile, you know, uh, not Chile, the, the restaurant Chile, but Chile, the country, okay? Um, not, um, told me not to eat, he told me to eat more beans, okay? He told me to sweat different times. He's given me instructions, amen? And so, and so those can be, you can be praying and seeking the Lord for your manifestation of healing. And here this young man, or he had been blind from birth, God, Jesus himself spits into that dirt and rubs the area, the eye that can't see, and he rubs it with something that see, would seemingly to the natural mind think, that's going to make it worse. That's not going to do anything but cause him more pain, right? But, no, Jesus, what happened was when he did it, then he said, go. What was his instruction to the young man we just read? He said, go and wash in the, I'm reading from John chapter 9, verses, uh, this is verse uh, 7. We're talking about the healing of the blind man at the pool of Siloam. And he said, so go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And he went, and so he did what God instructed him to do. He went his way, therefore, washed, and came back seeing. Amen. A young man, blind from birth, Jesus spits into the dirt, does something, and, and rubs his eyes. And, and he, but he had to follow the instruction. You know, how did he get to, now he was already blind, so maybe he was able to figure out how to get to the Pool of Siloam. Maybe he was near the Pool of Siloam, right? And, and but the point is that Jesus will has, have you do some very unusual situations that will, are going to bring about your healing, okay? And they are, are, are the Lord Jesus is the healer, and he knows your makeup. He knows you inside out. He's the one that created your DNA. He knows uh, he formed you before there was any days, before you, when you were in your, before he knew you in eternity past. And so he knows better than science what is going on in your, in your body and what is the best remedy to bring about the mir a miracle for you. Amen? And so... Um, in this situation, Jesus gave this instruction. He did an unusual thing. You've got to get out of your natural mind of what is going to bring about healing. Amen. Now we're going to go over to Mark uh, 11. And Pastor Kevin ministers out of this a lot. But you, can, you can't see sometimes how unforgiveness can be blocking your, the full manifestation of your healing. Um, and, uh, you can get over it because the Bible says that, um, you know, if you don't forgive other people, your debts, then God can't forgive you your debts. So, and so I felt like there's some scriptures today that the Lord had, um, uh, not wanted me to go over. So let's go to Mark uh, 11 and, um, we minister from this about, you know, uh, from Mark 11, a great, treatise on, on faith, hallmark scripture on believe in God and trusting God. So we're just going to read a few lines of Mark 11, and we're going to start with verse 22, and it says, Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, 
You have to speak to illness. You have to speak to symptoms. You have to speak to depression. You have to speak to um, pain. You have to speak to it. You have to speak to a spirit of grief to go from you. You have to do this. He's given you authority in the name of Jesus. And um, I was praying with someone this morning and, I, and the, as I was praying with them, the Holy Spirit said, what happened is the, these, these demons came in masquerading as grief, masquerading as being sad over a situation that happened. But, but see, the devil just doesn't come in, you know, by himself. A lot of times he likes to bring in a whole group of things, you know. He likes to bring in a cluster of illnesses. He wants to bring in, you know, you got one thing and then you got all of a sudden one thing came in and then there's 20 th other things that you've got. You've got a symptom here, you got, but you've got to speak to those symptoms and tell them to go in the name of Jesus. He's given you the authority to tell the, pe to tell the symptoms, those lying symptoms, those, that pain to go in Jesus name. So verily, and here's the scripture, verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, what is this mountain before you today? What is this this pain in your body? What is the situation? And I and and I just right now I, I want to say that there might this this the manifestation of these these symptoms or these this outworking of attack in your body may be um, again, some things that have been allowed in your mind that have brought about some situations. Um, I, I have, you want to take your thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. You must take your thoughts captive. That means you, when you realize that Satan's trying to get you in unforgiveness or in, 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 in speaking against a body of Christ or a gossiping, or speaking ill, or having ang anger towards your brother, right? You can have anger towards a brother or sister in the Lord. And, um, and, and, and the devil just wants you to get over into his camp, where he's, you're speaking those things, and you're entertaining anger, or unforgiveness, and then he can, then he can, he's got a door open, so then he can bring some other things into into your life so we, we you know not well <laughs> not good things okay and so thoughts are so important and let's go on whosoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and you shall not doubt in your heart but shall believe that those things which God has said he has said and he's given to us to say shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, what things thou so ever desire when you pray, you believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Amen? Amen? You've just got to stay in belief. No matter what situations have tried to keep you at, get you out of belief, because unbelief is a decision, and you how you have to build up your belief again is to read the Word of God and get your focus back on what God says. Amen. Um, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have any ought against any. So examine: is there an ought? We are to, oh, uh, the Lord said to, um, I was wrestling with something the other day, and the Lord said, the, that's the scripture rose up in my spirit. Oh, no man, oh, you owe no man anything but to love them. Uh, and they don't owe you anything, but you owe them nothing but love. You don't owe them this, you don't owe them that, you need to love them. And sometimes, we're trying to do a lot more things to help people, but what God said is that we're not to owe any man, but to love them. Amen. That's the key thing, that we walk in love with people no matter what situation is going, no matter how they use us, no matter what. And so, and so 
in, in verse 25, when, when you stand praying, if you're praying about forgive, if you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. See, it's, it's a, a trick. If you can't forgive others, and you're still holding offenses towards others, then you think that your father is still holding offenses towards you. And you don't approach your father in a love, tr in trusting that he loves you and that he has a great plan for your life and that he's forgiven you. See, it's, it's a catch. What do they used to say? Catch 22 that, you, you know, if you're not forgiving, then you don't really receive that your father forgives you either. So, so you've got to walk and, and examine yourself in, in if, if you're in unforgiveness in some area. Uh, years ago, the Lord wanted me to share this story, and I, you might have heard Pastor Kevin share this before, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a, a story about a dream that he had many, many years ago. Not, not recent. This is many, many years ago, but he wanted me to share it today okay, with you. And the dream was, he was, um, it was a Sunday afternoon, and um, we were at a church service, and um, and Pastor Kevin and I were there, and this this pastor comes up to him, this female pastor, and says, I would like for you to pray for me because I have a problem with my back. And so um, she had a partner there with her, and her partner was... Um, you know, her, her, her prayer part, person was there with her. And um, so Pastor Kevin began to pray for, for the lady, for the pastor. She was a female pastor. And, and, God, and, Jesus, and, and Kevin, as Kevin was praying for this pastor, the, um, the Lord delivered to Pastor Kevin as he was praying for her in the dream uh, that she, she had a problem with unforgiveness. So, so Pastor Kevin said to this woman, uh, the Lord said that you have a problem with unforgiveness. And, um, and the pastor says to her, to Pastor Kevin, oh, oh, I don't have a problem with, with unforgiveness. I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with unforgiveness. And, and then the person that was with her was shaking her head behind her saying, oh yeah, well, yeah, she has a problem with unforgiveness. Okay. So, um, so he prayed for her. And, and God delivered uh, three things to this pastor um, that, that were problems with her health. One of them was that she had unforgiveness towards people. Number two, she was not loving towards people. And number three, that she was not taking the place, her place in the ministry. Okay, and so he prayed for the, the lady and gave her those words. And he left, and that was the end of the dream. Well, Pastor Kevin is pondering this, this story all these years. This I don't know, 20 years ago, a long time ago that the Lord gave him this dream. But so Pastor Kevin is saying, Lord, what does this mean? Who is the pastor's wife? And, and uh, the Lord spoke to him, well, you know, you are the, the pastor's wife because the pastor is more married to Jesus. Amen. And so you are always married to Jesus. And so you're the wife, the bride, right? And so, so the Lord was speaking to him in that particular time frame that there were these areas in his life that he was not walking in love. He was not walking in forgiveness. And, he, and also he was not taking his place in the ministry. And I, and I tell you, this is a timeless story because there, if, when God's called you to do a particular thing and he's not asking you to do it, he's asking you, he wants to do it through you. But when you've been called and told to go forward and you don't move forward, you're in a place of disobedience. And then there's, a, and the devil knows that you've, you know that you're supposed to be going and he keeps hitting you and hitting you and hitting you. And, the, and what you have to do is you have to move forward. You have to move 
forward. When you have to get to that Salome and you have to wash your eyes, amen, you have to do what Jesus told you to do, no matter it makes no sense. See, see, if we think, we think things are supposed to make sense, we think um, we're, we're not supposed to minister if we have a symptom in our body, but that's not true. You have to minister because Jesus is healing you and healing. He's healing you yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And healing is on its way. If it, the manifestation isn't fully there yet, it's still, you are still healed. Amen. And so even though you have pain, even though you have symptoms, even though you have a situation, you want to you recognize that you have already been healed and, and God has already paid the price and it is on its way for you. Amen. So in, in, and so we talked about have, you've got to have faith in God. You have to have faith that Jesus himself is really your healer. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, whoever believes the report of the Lord. It didn't say pastors that believe the report of the Lord. It did not say uh, people that go to church every Sunday that believe the report of the Lord. It didn't say that um, if you went to seminary school and, and, and believe the report of the Lord that his arm will be not be shortened. No, it says that whoever will believe this report the arm believeth and stay in faith hallelujah the arm of the lord will not be shortened it will reach to you it will manifest itself amen the works of god these are just the works of god for you and i amen i mean he is continuing to bring about mighty works i tell you we are in the place that we have to, we live daily in the supernatural, right? We live in in the place of the supernatural. Behind me is a clock. It's it's, this, it's not eight. It's not eight o'clock or four o'clock, whatever it says back there behind me. It stopped. But see, in that you can stay in the time of the supernatural works of God every day, twenty four seven. You just enter in to faith. An expectation that God is going to meet you. Now, a Mark, let's go over to Mark 16, okay? Um, and again, you've got, do you know how much God loves you? Uh, I was praying with this person the other day, and as I was praying for the, with them, so, so, so many times uh, God will have me sing a song over a person. He'll just drop a, a spirit, you know, his spirit will drop a song in my heart for a person, amen? And, or he'll, he'll quicken me by a song to a specific, particular scripture. Amen. So, so don't despise songs and learning worship songs and because God can use them to speak and direct you to the scriptures. I'm looking for any way he wants to get me a word. I'm, I'm looking 24 seven for a word, another word. What can I do? What do you have for me today? What do you want me to do this moment? Hallelujah. Amen. And so let's go to Mark 16 here. And this is, um, Again, some, some things that God, that G, are in red. So we're, we're reading Jesus' words. And, you know, it's a neat thing if you haven't done that, um, is to go through the New Testament in the Gospels and just read the letters in red. I have my Bible as, as Jesus' words in red. And I tell you, it's really, it's really will get, get it will really minister to you just reading what Jesus said. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is Mark um, 16, verse uh, starting with 15. And he said it to, to his disciples. These are the last words, some of the last words that Jesus said to his disciples. I want you to go into all the world and I want you to preach the gospel to every creature. That means not just man, but that means you can speak, you can preach to your dog. You can pray for your dog. You can speak to your car. You know that we have, have spoken to our cars to start. I remember we heard we heard Kenneth Copeland tell a story about his car broken being broken down and how he spoke to his car to start. And I've got a hair on my face, excuse me. And so um, and so a few weeks later, I was ha I had a car that didn't run very well, and uh, it was. <laughs> Anyway, in a very, in a very difficult time, and um, and so I drove down to the store and to get some groceries, and I I got out of the car and I couldn't get the car to start. So, praise God! I I 
I, 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 I prayed and I said, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for my car. I'm trying to start it. So I called Kevin. Hallelujah. I said, honey, I can't get the car started. <laughs> so could you come down and pick me up and, and, and get the car going, you know, get, you know, pick me up and because the car doesn't work. And, uh, so he came down and he got into the car and he's commanded the car to start in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, sometimes hearing another person's testimony of what they did gets your faith up there that, you know, because God's not a respecter of persons. Amen. If he will do it for you, he'll do it for me. He'll do it for the end. He's, it didn't say that he, it says, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, whosoever will believe this report. Whosoever, said, we're a whosoever, you're a whosoever. Amen. And so Pastor Kevin prayed for that car and it started right up. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, why couldn't that, why didn't that happen for me, you know? And I don't even think I really used my faith and prayed over it. I just, I called Kevin and he met me. And But, you know, you might not have a Kevin, you know? So I want you to know that you can use your faith and you can pray and call on Jesus to heal your vehicle, to heal situations. We've had many different situations where God has healed uh situations and, and kept us and preserved us. And part of that is tithers rights because he promises us as tithers that we can rebuke the devourer. Amen. So when we see a situation that's unusual coming against us, we rebuke the devourer because we're tithers. Amen. So you can rebuke the devourer according to being a tither. Amen. Because he says you can, and he does. So if you see a, a you know, a, 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 Helen, you're a tither, you should be rebuking the devourer, girl, you know, because you have tither's rights in Jesus' name. And so, uh, Mark, let me read on about Mark 16. It's getting dark in here, and I didn't turn the lights on. And it says here, uh, so he, so he, so he, and he said to them, go you into all the world and preach the good news and preach your authority in the name of Jesus to every creature. To everybody's day and night, uh, whoever it is, the person in the room next to you, uh, going down the hall, singing songs of Jesus. If you're in that in that rehab facility tonight, you can Jesus sent you into that rehab facility to pray and rehab facility to bring Jesus in that He came in with you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! The healing power of Jesus came in with you. Hallelujah! And even though you might have pain in your body, you can pray for some others for their healing and their miracle. Hallelujah! Do not be moved by what is going on in your body or in your life that would try to prohibit you and try to tell you. That that you cannot minister and you cannot give the people the name of Jesus. Amen. It's a lie. Okay. So let's go. Because it wasn't by any of our works that we were saved. It was by faith in Jesus name. It was that we have been saved and we have been healed. And we. it was not by works of the law. It was by believing and taking it by faith and acting on the word of faith, hallelujah, that has brought me countless deliverances and is, is going to take me and, count, and bring me through many more deliverances throughout my life because it's not going to be the last time that I'm gonna, we're going to have a situation. Hallelujah. I mean, basically, Helen's been raised from the dead a few times already. Hallelujah. So he's never, you're never too dead for a resurrection, right? Let's go on. I'm going to finish Mark 16. So he that believes and is baptized, he that believes in on the name of Jesus and what he did and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow you, chasing you down. The goodness of God is chasing you down. Follow you that believe in my name. You will be able to cast out demonic oppression. You will be able to cast out devils, snakes and scorpions that come against you. Bites, things happening. Amen. Uh, these signs shall follow you that believe in my name. Verse 17 of Mark 16. That you will cast out devils. You will speak with new tongues, new languages. Hallelujah. Amen. You can take up serpents. That doesn't mean I'm going to take up a serpent, you know, but you will not, it will not be able to harm you. 
amen, that might come up against you. It may stand up to you. I've had snakes stand up against me. I've, I've had that happen before. That's been pretty crazy. Um, um, but, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, we have the authority, amen. Uh, they shall take up serpents if they drink anything deadly. I'm not going to go and test the Lord, tempt the Lord by drinking poison. If they drink something deadly, though, if you mistakenly drink something deadly or somebody tries to drug you or you, or you take a vaccine and because you're forced to or whatever, you can take, I thank you, Lord, even if I took that, this deadly thing will not harm me in Jesus' name. Amen? I tell you. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It will not hurt me. Um, we will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, you might not have anybody to lay hands on you tonight, but you're going to lay hands on yourself in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to release my faith and you're going to take it. Say, I take it in Jesus name. I, I take my healing. Amen. Because the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent, the vehement, the love Jesus they take hold like Jacob. He knew God loved him. He had seen what God had done for him time after time. How he was, even though he was a supplanter, even though he did this and every though he did that, but he knew that his father loved him. That Abba father loved him, and he was not going to let go until that angel blessed him. Amen. And did he not just bless him? He changed his name. Amen. He's changed it from Jacob to Israel. Amen. Amen. So, so you do not, don't you let go until what, until God brings that manifestation for you in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. And so it, it, let's just finish what it says. So, so, um, you shall, and you shall lay hands on the sick. In Jesus' name, and they shall recover. Now, we're not going to use a name of, a, of somebody that we don't believe in, like the the um, exorcists and the Jewish people at that time. And it talks about in the book of, of Acts. They didn't know, they didn't believe in Jesus. They had no right to use the name. But we are those that have him in our heart, that are married to Christ. Amen. Amen. And so we have covenant right to use his name, to sign the sign off for our healing package. Amen. Sign. Yes. Thank you. I, I already have it. Thank you. I have all those covenant benefits. And so, and then it says, and so then after the Lord went, had spoken unto them, he was received up to heaven and he sat on the right hand of God, which is where he is now. And then they went forth, and you go forth tonight and preach wherever you can the goodness of God. You preach about him healing you. Oh, how he healed you about this. Oh, how he healed you about this. It doesn't matter that you're still, he's still man, waiting on the full manifestation of this. He healed you then. He healed you this, and he's going to heal you again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, because that's your God. He's the same yesterday today and forever. And it says they went forth and they preached everywhere and the Lord was working with them, confirming the word with signs following. I tell you what, I encourage you, wherever you are, if you see somebody in need, stop, take a minute, ask them if, if you can pray for them. You're not the one that's healing them. It is a, called the prayer of faith. And that's also, I, I, was, I didn't share that, but that's in James chapter five which talks about, uh, uh, you, and if you don't have oil, it doesn't matter. Jesus didn't use oil every time, okay? You pray the prayer of faith is what matters, and that's in, in John 15, 13 through 20. Anoint, if you have oil, great, anoint them with oil. It can be cooking oil. It can be, you can use something, you don't have to use oil at all. You can lay hands on the sick and pray the prayer of faith, and you and you, and they and you can convert a sinner from their ways. I'm going to give you a couple more scriptures that I told you I had some more scriptures from my little. I've got my little little jewelry box, little prayer box. I told you about this. You know, I've got some scripture, some heels. I pulled some more out. 
and I've got my notebook. Of, we might do this tomorrow. We're going to go through some healing problems. Boy, I'm so excited. I tell you, I'm so excited because God is healing me. I tell you, he doesn't muzzle the ox when they're tre treading the grain. So I'm receiving healing uh, 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 for myself. So let me give you a couple of scriptures and we're going to close. Um, this is uh, from Psalm 138, verses 1 and 2. I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods will I sing. I will sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Okay, he magnifies his word and this is his word and we praise him. Hallelujah. This is another one from Psalm 138 and this carries on you might want to look and let's look at psalm 138 it might just be this is the whole passage i'm not sure i haven't looked at psalm 138 there's so many passages but let's read this one in the day when i cried thou answered me and strengthened me with strength in my soul amen he's strengthening your soul today all the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of Rhonda's mouth, when they hear the words of Helen's mouth, when they you testify, hallelujah, of what God has done. Glory to God, hallelujah. All the kings of the earth will praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy of my mouth and thy mouth. Yea, the, they shall sing. In the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Amen. And here's, uh, this is Psalm, some verses from Psalm 18. Let me give you this one, though. This is a little shorter. Psalm 35, 9 and 10. My soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. And, oh, this is a great one for you tonight. Helen, you want to take this. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee? Hallelujah. Take that one tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. And all, you speak to your bones, all my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto you? Hallelujah. Isn't that a powerful, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. I speak that over my bones. I thank you, bones. Right now, I speak to my bones. You are going to praise the Lord. You are going to manifest praise over, over, over to the Lord. And there you are going to say, there is no one like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't that an awesome scripture? Glory to God. I praise God. Uh, this is Proverbs 22, verse 9. He that has a generous or a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he gives his bread to the poor. And you know, the bread, the children's bread is healing. Amen? So he gives his bread to the poor. He gives his bread to the rich. He gives his bread to his covenant people. And healing is your portion. Amen? That's Psalm 112, 9. I'm going to give you just a couple more. Psalm 107, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Fix me. Make my bones straight. Amen. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Psalm 107, 20. He sent his word. You know this one. And he healed them. And he delivered them from their destructions. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And then Psalm 18. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock. He's my rock, he's my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust. He's my buckler, he's the horn of my salvation, he's my high tower. I call upon the, I will call and I'm calling on the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. It is God that girds me with strength and makes my way perfect. I know I gave you a lot of scriptures tonight, 
but listen to them. Go back, re-listen re to this. Go through some of these scriptures. I'm taking them for myself. Hallelujah. And uh, we're walking. We're, we're walking in divine health. He needs us as his body to walk in divine health and to stay in health. Amen. And so examine yourself. If there is some kind of offense towards a relative, to, towards a family situation in some way, examine your heart. Uh, make sure you're loving people. <laughs> you know, like, and, uh, and you're taking your place. And when God's told you to do something. So those great, are great timeless things, you know, that, that God gave to Kevin all those years ago that we can still um, check ourselves in. Amen. So thank you. You can go back if you list the beginning of this where I tell about the dream that Pastor Kevin had 20-something years ago. Hey, we're real people. We, we, have, uh, we have issues. We have things that God has, deals with us. But we have the Holy Spirit. Right? We have the Holy Spirit who loves us and guides us into truth. And it is the light of our salvation. And he, he lights, puts, sheds light on our path so that we can walk in divine health. That we can walk in prosperity. That we can walk in the fullness of everything that he purchased for us. Thank you for being with me. God bless you. I thank you right now. I send the word of healing. I say to your bones that you shall worship the Lord and praise God the Lord and magnify God. I thank you that the, every bone in myself and in those that are listening are going to praise the Lord tonight in Jesus name. We speak to our bones, come alive. Amen. Just like the Ezekiel speak to them that come alive, spirit of the living God, come and quicken our mortal body in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I take it for myself, but I send it to you in Jesus' name. God bless you. I'll be back with you tomorrow. And we'll probably maybe go over some of the healing Proverbs. I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you soon.